Hello everyone, I'm Dijon. And I'm Ayara. And welcome to the Mustacast, the podcast about the art of storytelling and how it's used across different mediums. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see our channel grow, and to click the notification bell so that you're notified when we post. As usual, free Palestine, you know, continue to donate, continue to boycott all the brands that are su- supporting Israel, and, you know, do what you can. Um, so, uh, what media have you been a- interacting with lately? So, it hasn't been much, because I've been super busy with, like, job stuff, but I have been getting really heavily back into playing Animal Crossing New Leaf. And I forgot how how much I missed that game. <laughs> like, um, this is going to be a hot take. New Leaf is the best modern Animal Crossing. New Horizons kind of sucks. Um, what year did and, New Leaf yeah. come out? New Leaf came out in like 2015, I want to say. Hold on. It's old because it's for the 3DS. I know that much. Um, 2012. 2012. Yikes. I didn't. You I, know when the first one came out? The first Animal Crossing? I can look it up. Because, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I didn't really hear much about Animal Crossing myself up until the new one, the newest one came out, was the New Horizons, mm. which came out the same day as Doom yeah. Eternal. Yep. And I was, uh, I was the playing The first Doom Animal Crossing, yeah, real, as you should. The first Animal Crossing came out in 2001. Um, okay. Yeah, Doom Eternal was my beginning of the pandemic game. <laughs> real, I, real. I was, I was relaxing by killing demons while everybody else was... Playing, playing animal crossing potatoes and stuff <laughs> but uh right yeah go ahead. hunting for tarantulas um i've been doing a lot of that i've been doing a lot of jackbox games with friends recently that's been fun and yeah, then I'll also that a lot myself of today Ooh, exciting and then i've um been kind of like low-key hosting a D campaign over the past couple weeks it's wild west themed it's every sunday and that's been really really fun um another oh i started playing bayonetta 2 I don't know if I mentioned this last time on the podcast, but I started playing Bayonetta 2. I'm enjoying it a lot more than I do the first Bayonetta. The combat's way better. The story, not so much. Um, I hear the second one's a lot gayer than the first. Oh, for sure. Like, the whole premise of it is you're going on a quest to save your totally not girlfriend from hell. Um, Yeah. I don't know. It makes me so sad that Beojon were not in game. They should have been. <laughs> Cowards. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it. About it. Well, uh, for me, I-, I played the Concord beta, but I'm gonna talk about that at the very end of the podcast. Uh, um, I saw Princess Mononoke in theaters, Ooh. And, I- and I finally watched it all the way through without falling asleep. Uh. For those of you who don't know, I tried to sit down and watch it for so long, but I kept falling asleep on it because it's such a long movie. But I was like, if I see it in theaters, one, I just want to see some Ghibli movies in theaters other than, um, what is that I saw? What is that movie called? The Boy and the Heron? I saw that in theaters. Um, right, right, right. I did low-key fall asleep on that movie a little bit in the middle too, though. <laughs> why, why, why are these studio Ghibli movies so long? I be sleeping. I'm getting old. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was good. Um and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try and see uh, Kiki's Delivery Service in October. So. Ooh, Because those, exciting. other than Howl's Moving Castle, which I saw and watched just at home, I wanted to see Princess Mononoke and Kiki's Delivery Service the most. And then after that, I would just watch whatever. Right. I, I'm not really, I don't have any particular, actually, yeah, you know what, I think after that, it's uh, Spirited Away. I haven't seen that. Mm. So, mm-hmm. That's the one after Kiki's Delivery Service that I'm like, that's the next one on the list. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. I've rewatched uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Kung Fu Hustle is such a good movie. Have you ever seen Kung Fu Hustle? Mm-hmm. I haven't, but I've heard of it. Oh my god, it is ridiculously good. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a it's a uh, like a you know a Chinese martial arts comedy uh, made by the mm. same dude who made uh, Shaolin Soccer, and oh. it's it's so funny and the action is so good, and it very much is. A lot of people have always said since it came out in like the early two thousand that it is like. It is the example of what a live action Dragon Ball should be in the way and Ooh. how goofy it is and how the action is done. It's it's really good. And um, the person who made that movie actually did produce Dragon Ball Evolution, but he kind of oh, wow. didn't care. <laughs> oh. And he didn't realize the weight of the property. So he kind of right. just didn't. He, like, he, he, like I said, he just didn't care. So, you know, you know how that movie turned out. 
Um, yeah. I wish he cared. It's a shame, too. I wish he understood the weight of the, the property, and I wish he was the one that directed it, and he wasn't just a producer. Because it, right. it could have been really good. But hopefully, the next time we get a live action Dragon Ball Z, they take huge, huge inspiration from uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Um, yeah. I also saw Fa- Fall Guy um, uh, by digital instead of theaters, but you know, I'll talk about that later. Um, you know, still watching mm-hmm. House of the Dragon. The show continues to be absolutely wild. Um, I need to get around to rereading the first Game of Thrones book and then just reading the rest. But first, I need to finish the current Witcher book I've been reading every night. I read stuff, mm-hmm. but and I, and I think about reading The Witcher, but then I don't, and I end up reading like some uh, some some Korean manhwa. <laughs> right, I'm not gonna hold you. I be reading them 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 dirty manhwas. I'm not gonna hold you, okay? They got they, me. They, they got me in a no. chokehold, okay? And I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> they... I'm not into harem anime, but low key, I'm mm-hmm. into harem manhwa. <laughs> You're real though, because it listen. Her, her, an, yeah, harem anime, anime. It's mostly because I feel like Manwa, they know that they can't have these these characters be children <laughs> because right. it's all adult. Whereas with anime, it's weird because one, when I was a kid, I wasn't even into that. But especially now as an adult, I can't get I can't get into that because all these characters are children and it's weird and it's creepy. Right. You it's know, like, anime anime yeah. can be super creepy about this stuff. But when in Manwa, because of the fact that it's adult media and you know some real stuff happens in that, <laughs> if you yeah. know, you know. That you know the characters right. just straight up can't be that young, so it's much more comfortable to read. For sure. And they got me in a chokehold, and every night I'm reading at least two. <laughs> You're like, damn. <laughs> the art be fire. Sometimes mo- I'm not gonna lie. Most of the art is trash, and you gotta really dig through to find gold. No, for sure. Because the yeah. the art be trash. Sometimes the art be trash, or sometimes the art's like okay, but the story's good, so I'll stick with it. But I always right. try to find the ones with the with like actually good art because most of the time the art is yeah. garbage. And yeah. I and every time I'm just like, I hope they keep at it though, and they don't, and they, they yeah, succeed sure. because they'll only get better at art the more they draw, and then eventually right. I'll, I'll read your stuff. But until then, <laughs> get good. Um, God, you're making me want to catch up on a manhwa that I kind of dropped because uh, I didn't have the time to keep up with it. It's like. Um, Shoot, of course I forget what it's called as soon as I want to talk about it, but it was, like, um, based on a novel, and the art was really, really good, the story was really, really good. It kind of kept hitting the same plot beats, like, over and over again, which I stopped enjoying, which is why I took a break from it, but I think, from what I've heard, it's gotten better about that, so I might pick it back up. Yeah, so, like, I've only read one, like, what is it called, like, GL one, and it was, no, I read two, mm-hmm. and they were both really good, but, and those are easily, like, some of the best ones I've read, um, and mm-hmm. they, those those are almost always more story driven, uh, mm. but the, unfortunately the BL ones just don't do it for me because you can tell that yeah. most most of them are written by women, and I, yeah. I, 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 you know I love me some women writers you know especially when you know some of the, my favorite anime of all time written by women you know Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and I'm actually going to talk about one later that's getting a remake but um, they look you know what I'm looking for when I'm reading <laughs> these. And yeah. women just don't be right mad. So I need a <laughs> I need a gay man to write one of these boy love ones because no, the women just they don't understand. I don't feel like they probably because they're writing it for women. Um, because a lot of right. I a lot of my friends <laughs> read that type <laughs> of stuff. And growing up, right. before I started reading it myself, they would always. I had this one friend named Gabby who would always just <laughs> be reading it in the middle of the cafeteria and then like oh. try and trick you into looking at her phone <laughs> and i'm just like why are you doing this to me gabby uh, <laughs> but yeah they're they're, they're writing it for a, a different audience but i'm like nah i need somebody to write this for me right i need you i need a man to write change it you want to see for men. gotta be the change you want to see anyway, that's what that's a discussion for a started. different type of podcast yep yep for sure for sure <laughs> Um, watching the bear still. Uh, I watched the episode I think last night. Um, slowly making my way to, um, through the season. You know, I wish they did it weekly. I hate that the bear comes out all at once. But uh, yeah. you know, I'm enjoying. It. I'm getting through it. I'm getting through this season much faster than I did the, the second season. The second season, I took my time. I took forever, oh, wow. and Loki just forgot about it. And then eventually, I I ran through it right before <laughs> the, the most recent season. Um, mm-hmm. The acolyte's over. I'll talk about that later. Oh. TV and film. And of course, still watching X Men the anime series. I'm almost done. Two episodes left in the last Yay. season. Um, I was I, I just had to take a break because I I was been I mm. binged it and I the second season's on only uh 
10 episodes, so it's short mm-hmm. in comparison to all the other seasons. Um, so I've been, so I could have ran through it, but I just needed a break. But now I'm, I'm close to done. Right. I and it's this up, this season has been here to miss. There's been some, some banger episodes. There's been some really good episodes, and then like the mm-hmm. most boring episodes in the entire show. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. The last episode was great. It introduced Cannonball, one of the, the like new mutants from the comics. And mm-hmm. I knew it was Cannonball, even though I never read New Mutants, because it's just his powers. His powers, very clearly, was like, that's a power that you would then call someone Cannonball. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there was an episode about Wolverine telling a backstory, um, or telling a story about his, his time during World War II, working with Captain America, which was really cool. Um, mm-hmm. And it made me want a Metal Gear game, uh, or a Metal Gear-style Wolverine game set during World War II, where he plays Wolverine in this like stealth scenario. I feel like that would, that would be, be really cool. fun. I should also mention, since we're talking about uh, Manwa, that Tower of God is back. Um, I thought that, uh, well, I knew it was back, but I guess I didn't check at the appropriate time, so the episode wasn't on Crunchyroll <laughs> yet. So um, now that I'm two episodes behind, so I got to catch up. Probably three episodes now, because it probably releases on Sunday or something like that. Um, the u- mm-hmm. anime usually does. Um, so yeah, I got to do that. But uh, also, you, you real, mentioned that real. Nier was back. Oh, yes, and you talking about Crunchyroll, you reminded me. Automata is back. It has been for, like, three weeks now. Um, it's getting into Route C of the game, and the way they're adapting it is so delicious and tasty. Um, the Nier anime was already really, really good, but, like, the way that they're doing this current story arc is really, really good. And it diverges enough from canon to make it unique and not, like, I'm just watching the game all over again. I really like how they handle it, and I am so scared for this week's episode because I know what happens um, in game during the part that they're at. I'm yeah. so ready to be sad. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I think video game adaptations always need to do. They need to add like additional context and make small changes mm-hmm. that um, don't completely change the direction of the story, but just add a bunch of new stuff for people who played the game. Yep. And the last fist did that. Even um and. I think I did talk a little bit about how I think after thinking about it longer, I like the way the last of us did it because they added because I think I was just in my mind going like I didn't I just didn't need it. I didn't need I or I didn't want the last of us show to just be the game again, which is mostly right. what it was. I wanted them to like explore the twenty years in between what happens at the beginning or the the majority of the game and the very beginning of the game. Be when the like mm-hmm. apocalypse first starts. But, you know, right. thinking about it longer, they added so much more stuff and made, like, a bunch of really cool little changes to the story that I'm like, this is, The Last of Us is 100%, like, the perfect adaptation. Whereas yeah. um, Fallout does what I kind of wanted them to do with The Last of Us, which is tell a story within the universe that is canon, but um, takes place in a time period where you can really just do a bunch of new stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. What were you going to say? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say... Um, like, I think a big part of it is that, like, from the beginning, the producer of the game, uh, Yoko Taro, A, has been a member of, like, the writing team, and also B, had, like, established that, like, this is Nier's canon, but this is an alternate version of Nier's canon. It's not going to, like, the, he set up that expectation of it's not going to follow the game 100%, because technically it's a different canon, which yeah. works within the canon of Nier. I think that's really clever. Yeah, especially um, since there's, like, a bunch of different endings from my understanding. And uh, also, like, Automata's whole thing is that it's a spinoff, like, uh, a spinoff of an original game and based on a joke ending mm-hmm. at that. Uh, Automata yeah. and Replicant, honestly, uh, which is really funny to me. Yes. Uh, what is it? Uh, unfortunately, he turns out to, he, it's, it turns out that he's a Zionist, but Neil Druckmann was, like, very directly involved with The Last of Us show. Mm. And that's a big reason. He, like, I mean, he directed, I think, a couple episodes, really, one. And that's why it's... Uh, um, that's why it's so uh, faith, so faithful close. to the game, but also still really good. And yeah, yeah um, I am excited for setting the two. bar. Uh, good adaptations. Yeah, I need that man to leave that company though. I want to. I want to be yeah. able to play, play Naughty Dog games, but until he leaves, I'm just not going to do it. But we uh, unfortunately have more stuff like that to talk about later because that's just the climate we're in right now. Um, yeah. We're moving on to animation. Uh, I sent you a trailer for Terminator Zero, which um you did. I only discovered recently. I'm I I feel like I had to have seen it in like one of the like the like anime showcase things that Netflix does, um, mm-hmm. but, but I guess I kind of just forgot about it. Uh, 
but it's from Skydance uh, Production I I G, uh, Masashi Kudo and uh, Madsen Tomlin, and uh, yeah, it's starring Timothy Oliphant, Rosario Dawson, Sonia Mizuno, Andre Holland, and Anne Dowd. It premieres on uh, August 29th on Netflix. Um, Exciting! Which is uh, uh, the same day that Skynet uh, um, destroyed the world in uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and it is the the, oh. the, titch, the titular Judgment Day um, that they're releasing it on. <laughs> so, um, that's cool. And uh, production IG um, animated Ghost in the Shell and Villain Saga Season 1. So, Ooh. The animation at the very least is gonna be lit, and uh, I was gonna say that gives me hope. I'm a I'm a fan of Terminator. I wouldn't say huge fan. Um, I, I don't I feel like I've um, I don't think I've seen enough of them to say I'm a huge fan. But I do really like the first two movies, so I don't think I'm a huge fan of those two movies. I need to I've seen I haven't seen a third yeah. one in so long. I saw it once when I was a kid, <laughs> but I I know people don't like that one. But I'm sure I'll enjoy it when I watch it. And uh, one of these days yeah. I'm gonna have to go through all of them. Um, because mm-hmm. I haven't seen all of them, but uh, I've seen the first three. And uh, I was gonna say. Earlier, I know of Terminator. You haven't seen it? Cultural impact, but I haven't seen it. Oh, no, that's I need to. Terminator is really good. You gotta watch Terminator. I might still too. watch this anyway, just as like an intro into the series, and then start actually watching the movies, like I did with Saw. Yeah. Um, I've I've been slowly into those. Uh, <laughs> been. I uh, crazy. I just be in a Saw. I just I don't know. Over the years, I, I dislike gore like that less, but I used to like it. Real. Yeah, um, I like watch them over like my girlfriend's shoulder because she'll put them on like when there's nothing else on TV to watch. We did watch this was like a couple months ago. There's there's a really like shitty Saw movie, um, and like, it's called like, like it's Jigsaw. That's what it's called, and it's it's really bad. The one with but the, I enjoyed it because it was so bad. With the uh, Chris, <laughs> what's his last name? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna admit the one that Will Smith slapped. What's his last name? Oh, Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris Rock. Yeah. Oh wait, no, he was in he was in Spiral. He wasn't in Jigsaw. Yeah, he was in Spiral. Uh, Jigsaw had a whole bunch of like B list actors, I think. Yeah. But um, it was it was something special. Um, very funny. Yeah, I've been wanting in like Animatrix style anthology series for Terminator for a while, mm-hmm. where I wanted them to like make a bunch of really interesting and different like Terminator models. Um, right. Um, I don't think this is an anthology. But uh, I am still excited to finally have an animated Terminator show because I have been wanting animated Terminator for a while. For sure. Um, so what I was talking about earlier in terms of uh, mm-hmm. anime and, and woman mangaka, uh, Rama yep. One and a Half is getting a remake from MAPPA. Yes. Because MAPPA is animating everything. Um, yeah. And overworking their employees, and it sucks. But unfortunately, it looks yeah. real good, despite that. <laughs> or because <laughs> despite of it, really. Um, unfortunately, because it, which sucks. Um, yeah. You know, I've always been faintly interested in Rama, um, and I've always heard great, great things about it, but I haven't uh, watched it or read it myself. So I'm excited to yes, finally actually uh, watch it in some form. And, uh, you know, the creator, Rumiko uh, Takahashi, has two certified hood classics under her belt with mm-hmm, this and then mm-hmm. Yasha, which I did read and watch in Yasha. I literally have watched all of the Yasha <laughs> except for the last season, which is like treated as a separate series. What is it called? Like the final something. Um, I, so, yeah. I haven't I haven't watched that. I started to watch the the like continuation, but it was bad, so I stopped. Um, real, real. But yeah, I'm excited for this. Um, I also discovered yeah. that. The original Ranma anime is partly responsible for the anime boom of the 90s because it was one oh, wow. of the very first English localizations done by Viz Media. And it was like, oh, oh, one that's of, cool. it was like one of the first to blow up and get really popular. So we have Rumiko uh, Takahashi to, to thank for like Toonami becoming a thing and just anime becoming yeah. so popular low key. Um, I haven't, I've watched some of Inuyasha. I haven't finished it. But I have watched the adaptation of Urusei Yatsura, which is another um, manga and anime series by Rumiko. Um, and it's really good, especially the remake that came out recently. Really, really good. So I have high hopes. Uh, and I think I will be watching Rama one half when the remake comes out. Yeah, it's weird. I'll probably think, watch the original too. Uh, it's, it's technically like a romance, a rom com, which mm-hmm. uh, I guess. Essentially, it's funny because that's that's literally kind of just what shoujo is for the most part. It's just rom coms. It's in the same way that shonen is uh, action comedy. A lot of shoujo's are romantic comedies. 
because boys like action and, and girls like romance, I guess. Right. <laughs> uh, that's that's the dichotomy. Um, well, yeah, excited to see that. Um, so apparently, Cartoon Network is all but dead, with its staff being greatly reduced across the board, and and several projects been canceled or shelved. Um, you know, uh, big studios uh, make their finances look better by reducing uh, spending and cutting staff. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's happening here. Um, despite the fact that animation absolutely carried the entertainment industry during the pandemic, this, right. is, how, this is how they're treated for their, all their hard work. Um, it's ridiculous. But this isn't the end for Cartoon Network, though. Uh, um, there are still some new projects in work, so... You know, if we want to see the studio continue to succeed, we've got to support them and make sure that they're able to make new things and, you know, rehire and, you know, start, you know, just making some Growing again. An animated stuff again. Yeah, um, for sure, for sure. You know, the day animation is seen as the wonderful medium that it is rather than a genre for kids will be a glorious day, specifically in the West. Because in the East, they know. They know. But over here, right. they be tripping. Um, last but certainly not least in animation for me, is uh, My Avengers with Superman. Uh, the finale aired yeah. last night and I watched it on Max this morning. And uh, Season two of the series finale. Season two finale. Yeah, gotcha. it, it was greenlit okay. for season three. Um, oh, nice. Okay, because yeah. I was like, oh no. <laughs> so in episode nine, Clark got a new suit. And it's Ooh. it's all right. You can look it up for yourself. Um, oh, okay. I don't hate it. But I do prefer the previous one. Uh, this one has more of an armored look with these like spiky shoulder pads, and it mm -hmm. it's an attempt to make his uh, costume more similar to the Kryptonian garb in um, in this universe, the way the Kryptonians dress. And uh, honestly, one of the few things I dis dislike about this show, and yes, I said few, even though I complain a lot, there's only a few things I dislike, but they're just big things. <laughs> Right, um, and one of them is that um I don't like the art direction of this show. I like the art style, but I don't mm. like the the character and world design. Um, mm. It's all very sterile and very like hospital like, in that it uses yeah. a lot of white, and it's all very basic and kind of drab and boring. Um, like I've said before, they sucked nearly, or like really the entire like all of the sauce out of damn near every villain. <laughs> um in this show to give them more of a kryptonian look like they just did with clark in episode nine um and they're also uniform and boring and like literally in the last episode the villains come to help superman which is cool um something that right. su superman and pretty much literally like damn near every like popular um like like main like a-list dc superhero has that batman doesn't mm -hmm. is that their villains respect <laughs> them most of, right and and that they respect their villains or most of them whereas like batman he, he can't bring it in him to respect any of the villains and only a handful of them not even that maybe like one or two actually respect him like bane and ra's al ghul whereas right. like with superman and the flash like they actually have a rapport with their villains so occasionally push comes to shove the villains will actually help superman and the flash but batman they will let that man die before they lift the finger to help them <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, they all come to help, and they're all wearing their their costumes. And when they're all standing next to each other, because this is the first time that we've seen more than three of the villains working together. So it's, it's like six villains working together. And when they're all standing mm -hmm. next to each other, actually, that's not true. In the first season, you watched the entire first season. Um, I did. In the I first did. season, they did fight like, Superman together at one point. But seeing them all right, together again, like just standing still, you realize how boring they all look and how uniform it is. They're all wearing white armor with like hints of the colors, like their main colors from the comics. And it's 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 mm -hmm. it's real boring. Um, yeah, I'm but, looking at this new suit. I, the, this is, the sauce is not they there. Removed the, I don't like it. They removed the trunks. I do like that his boots are like higher, like above the knee, I think that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I, think, I that, think that's cool. I think that does help balance out the lack of trunks because it's more red mm -hmm. coming up the leg. But the shoulder pads are weird. And get rid of this tune tone shit. Just use the light blue across the entire suit. And get right. rid of, get rid of like half of those lines, like put lines where like seams would be because of the way the clothes are made. But otherwise, the rest right. of those lines can get out of here. And also, yeah, it's just it looks kind of awkward to I, me. I, I don't, don't know. I don't share the hate that a lot of people have for those like costume designs that have like the one like like fingerless glove on like one finger. 
I think a lot of people hate that when like the, the fabric that just comes up on one finger. I, I don't mind that that design, but the way they do it on this yeah. costume, I don't like it. Um, I was gonna say it looks nice in in theory, like if it's done correctly. This is not done correctly, unfortunately. Yeah, it's just it's it's way too much for Superman. It needs to be simpler. Um, on a more positive note, um, the finale was great. Um, I mentioned before that Brainiac sounded like Kronos from Hades 2. And while that is true, mm-hmm. it's not the same voice actor. Brainiac is played oh. by uh, Michael Emerson, a uh, very famous actor. Oh. Um, he uh, played a character in uh, Fallout recently. Um, oh, wow. And he does an amazing job. Uh, Kronos is surprisingly voiced by Logan Cunningham, who voices like half the cast really? of Hades. And really? Who, and he also, you know, voices Hades himself and the narrator. But right. You can hear the the similarities between Hades and the narrator. You cannot tell. I know if you've heard Cronus' voice. That I have a little bit. Does not sound like Logan Cunningham. I'm like, yeah. His range and is I think insane. I was going to say that's just beautiful because it's like the range. We'd love to see it. Um, let's see. What else do I have? All right. So back to Superman. I mentioned that uh, Superman has like this blue lightning form that he like has this kind of almost super saiyan like power up um mm. and it's a reference to a comic where superman got split in two and it was a, a blue superman and a red superman and in this show supergirl is the red superman um they aren't like literally oh. one person split in two but right her like super saiyan form is red so i thought that was a, a, a nice little little reference um and yeah i'm excited to see where the series goes now that supergirl is a full-time member of the cast and that uh, Lex is a stat- an established villain now. So uh, I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, they did make a, a, a reference to Lobo at one point, where one character mm-hmm. called himself the main man, even though he isn't Lobo, and Lobo's the main man. That's what he calls himself. Um, right. So I'm almost certain Lobo's going to show up in the next season. And I, I'm curious nice. to see... I mentioned it before, I hate that, that uh, heat wave... Is, is a Superman villain in the show. Why would they do that? But I'm wondering if they'll yeah. have any other, like, DC character show up in the show. Um, that would be nice. Because they made references to them in the, the Mr. Spidlick episode. And I think I think some of them might show up because they did have Thanagarians, which is, like, the race of people that Hawkman and Hawkwoman come from. Um, mm-hmm. And they, they should have had a Green Lantern at one point. Um, kind of. Oh. Um, and it was interesting. Um, okay. So I wonder if, I mean, it would make sense if Green Lantern show up or like the Anakarians. That would make a lot of sense. But also I'm thinking that right. Dr. Fate might show up. I think Dr. Fate is the most likely to show up. One of the most likely ones to show up because in the Mixer Spidlick episode in this universe, he says that he's a, mm. like a god of chaos. And that is specifically the group of people that Dr. Fate fights against. So the next time right. Mixer Spidlick show up, I have a feeling that Dr. Fate's also going to show up. Ooh. Um, so yeah, I'm going to see where they go. Yeah. Moving on to nice. comics. Let me turn myself down because I'm peeking a lot. Uh, okay. So, Batman Superman was finest. Speaking of Mr. Spitlick, uh, the imps of the fifth dimension are being murdered by a mysterious being from the fourth dimension. Oh. So, so uh, they recruit, uh, well, Mr. Mr. Spitlick and Batmite recruit the help of Superman and Batman. Um, and Poison Ivy, number 23, Harley comes to the rescue of uh, Ivy after she attempts to sacrifice herself to stop the Pharaonic Man, but she may have been too late. Uh, oh. Green Arrow, number 12, after dealing with the Dark Archer Marilyn for the hundredth time in this series, Green, <laughs> Green Arrow seemingly defeats him, but I doubt it, with the help of his extended family of uh, other bow-wielding heroes, and uh, goes on a little short beach vacation. And, uh... Ooh. In Birds of Prey number 10, the Birds of Prey learned that an evil septuplet, um, metahuman, oh. who murdered five of her own sisters and stole their powers, is trying to kill Barbara Gordon because she'll get her mother killed in the future. <laughs> Interesting. It, it is it's very wild. Um, so I read the first three chapters of Danda Dan because mm-hmm. I, I watched the trailer for the for the anime. I, I, I sent it to you. Um, you know, right. This is interesting. And then I saw it on Shonen Jump. I was like, you know what? Let me check this out. I don't think anyone's ready for what <laughs> this anime will be. I'm not ready. <laughs> the closest you say that? I can compare it to is Chainsaw Man in terms of pure shock and surprise oh. at the absolute wild shit that happens. 
Um, oh boy. The show is being animated by Science Saru, who did Scott Pilgrim Takes mm-hmm. Off, and it releases Ooh. sometime in October. So I think I'm going to try to catch up on the manga um, before October. Mm-hmm. And while I'm doing that, since I'm going to have to subscribe to do that, I'm going to finish up Bleach. I literally am like 10 chapters away from finishing Bleach. I need to just finish that. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's crazy. The, the 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 only unfortunate part is it does mm-hmm. have the classic over sexualization of teenage characters, and I'm like, why are you? Ugh. You could be funny without this. Why are you doing this? But it's it's crazy. It was so <laughs> wild. I was like, I'm in. This is I I need to watch this. <laughs> I'm locked in. But uh, moving on to TV and film. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we live in time. I sent you a trailer for um this movie. And um, all, all I saw was a poster of the lead actors, and I was all in. I saw, um, why am I forgetting their names all of a sudden? Was it Florence Pugh? No. Yes. It was Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield. Oh. And I saw them, and oh. I was just like, I'm in. I, I need this in my life. Um, so uh, Element, Florence Pugh, and Tobias, Andrew Garfield, are put together in a surprise encounter that changed their lives. Through snapshots of their life together, uh, falling for each other, building a home, becoming a family. A difficult truth is revealed that rocks his foundation. As they embark on a path challenged by the limits of time, they learn to cherish each moment of the unconventional route their love story has taken. And filmmaker Ooh. John Crowley's decade-spanning, deeply moving romance. Uh, releases in theaters uh, this fall. And yeah, it looks really good. I just saw the that actors and good. I was just like, I'm oh, in. I like this. I like Andrew Garfield. I like Florence Pugh. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for this movie. Um, Real. So we got a trailer for Captain mm-hmm. America: Brave New World. Um, and we I did. Um, and it was and a pretty, it. it was a pretty good trailer. Um, it gives some some yeah. Winter Soldier vibes, which is uh, my personal favorite MCU movie, and it's in my top ten movies of all time. Uh, oh, so wow. that gets me excited. Uh, the trailer begins with a little nod toward the original actor for General Ross, William Hurt, um, unfortunately passing away not too long ago, um, and he's now being played by Harrison Ford. Uh, oh. Uh, so we see Isaiah Bradley, who appeared in Falcon and Winter Soldier, trying to assassinate Ross. Um, and Bradley was one of the many attempts to recreate the super soldier serum. Um, mm-hmm. And he was the first black Captain America. But the U.S. government, oh. of course, buried that fact. Um, right. But in Falcon and Winter Soldier, I think it was like uncovered and um, by Sam and helped like put that back into the spotlight. And um, mm-hmm. we see glimpses of a room that looks similar to the place where the Winter Soldier was tortured and conditioned. Hinting at um, that potentially having been done to Isaiah Bradley. Uh, oh. And, you know, we get a few action scenes. And one in, part- in particular featured uh, Captain America cutting a fighter jet's wing off with his own wings. Oh. And breaking the sound barrier. So we finally have a reason for why he wears that ugly helmet. Because <laughs> if you're going to be breaking a sound barrier, having your bare face out doesn't make sense. He does not have yeah. superpowers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the trailer ends with a tease of the Red Hulk. Who, Ooh. if you don't know who he is and like his identity and all that, I'm not going to spoil it for you. So, um, mm-hmm. I'm excited, but unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, as dope as this right. movie looks, I won't be seeing it, and neither should anyone else, because yep. as we dis- discussed before, this movie will touch on, or uh, originally it was supposed to touch on, the Israel and Palestine conflict, but um, you know, we were like, we have no faith in them doing this sort of justice. Um, right. But it was also revealed not too, um, a while back, but we did talk about it, that the actress playing uh, Sombra, who is a character from the comics, who in the comics is a Zionist, who like gets reformed, um, mm-hmm. that the actress who plays her is an actual Zionist. Not only that, yeah. she served in the IDF. Not Ooh. only did she serve in the IDF, she was exempt from service due to an injury and decided to serve herself. She she made the choice. Oof. So yeah. Uh for the first time in a Love long that. time, I will likely be sailing the high seas mm. mm-hmm. in regards to this movie, if you catch my drift. Um <laughs> because I want to see this, but I do not want to put money in the hands of Zionists and people that support them. Um Yeah, for sure. It sucks that uh Sam's first film as Captain America has all this baggage attached to it. And, you know, yeah. if, if this movie fails because of the fact that one of the lead characters is Zionist, they'll be so quick to blame the black lead actor mm-hmm. instead of the Zionist. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 
I, I don't encourage sailing the high seas, but, you know, I'll find some way to see this that doesn't uh, <laughs> support his Put money in the hands of Zionists, yeah. Uh, you know, it releases on Valentine's Day, weirdly enough, next year. Um, Interesting. I, so I feel like it's a weird time to release this movie, but okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want this movie to be good. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll find a way to watch it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So The Fall Guy. Um, the Fall Guy was just like a love letter to stunt performers, and 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 it was a love story in of itself. Um, I would have loved to see this in theaters, but if a movie doesn't make an ungodly amount of um, money opening night, uh, it's considered a failure. Failure, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> so I actually ended up having to watch this on my tablet the night before. Oh. I lost access to it because I rented it from YouTube. Um, I was going to watch oh. it with a friend, but they had to leave before we got the chance to. And when mm-hmm. I tried to watch it myself, my internet was acting up, so I, I was forced to watch it on my tablet. But despite have, watching it in the worst way possible, I still loved it. Um, <laughs> uh, the unofficial theme for this movie is I Was Made for Loving You by Kiss, and I've never heard so much Kiss in my life because they played this <laughs> song almost as much as they played Danger Zone in Top Gun. And I think that's oh. on purpose as a reference since Tom Cruise is the star of that film and he's known for doing his right. own stunts and this whole movie is about stunt performing. Um, right. The story is about a stuntman named Colt Seavers, played by Ryan Gosling, who is critically injured on set and decides to quit the biz afterward. But in doing so, he also goes to his uh, girlfriend, who is a camera operator on the film, played by Emily Blunt. And um, a year later, she lands her first directing gig, and he's convinced to join the project as a stuntman again for Tom Ryder, who's played by mm-hmm. Aaron, Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson, a.k.a. Quicksilver in the MCU, and he also played uh, Kick Ass. Um, he's also about to, he's about to play Craven in a live action Craven movie that looks like it's going to be hilariously bad. Um, oh, but <laughs> and uh, I don't know. This is a completely different dis- discussion. But low key, he was groomed. That's that's a completely oh. different discussion. You you should look it up. It's a very interesting story. I, and I think I will. Yeah, it's, it's very unfortunate what he what he's gone through. But uh, he's younger than, he, than you think. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. Ryder is missing, and. Uh, Colt Sievers is tasked with finding him, but it turns out that Ryder is caught up in some shady stuff, and Colt has to use his uh, stuntman training to defend himself while continuing the search. Um, yeah, the script is very clever and hilarious. Small things always come back, and like I couldn't suggest watching this movie more. You know, support this movie; it deserves it. It's unfortunate that uh, it wasn't in theaters for as long as it should have been. Um, but hopefully, yeah. once it, it sounds like fun though. Yeah, hopefully, once it re- releases on like Netflix or some some place like that, it'll have renewed life. Um, yeah. So, last but not least in TV and film for me, The Acolyte. Um, mm. The last two episodes were easily the best and most interesting episode plot-wise. Um, mm-hmm. The action and performances really carried the show for me because the plot is honestly paper-thin. Um, uh, there's an interesting premise and concept, but the, the exploration of these ideas lack a, a lot of the necessary nuance. Um, mm-hmm. But it does pick up in the last two episodes, and they do start to play with those nuances more. Uh, the idea that the Jedi or like a corrupt religious force was at the core of the show, but they didn't really do enough with that idea until the very end. And I could see a season mm-hmm. two leaning more into that because, you know, that's uh, also the core of uh, um, the prequel trilogy that the Jedi kind of suck. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a far less Sith uh, of a Sith focus than I wanted and that uh, it felt like we were promised, but maybe I just got my hopes up too much. Um, I was right. expecting it to be, entirely from the point of view of like a dark side user but it was more mm-hmm. it was more split um the saber fights though were absolutely incredible um and they Ooh. saved the best for last because the saber fight at, in the last episode was easily the best in the entire series and there was a lot of really good ones um it's I, nice. I can't believe no one thought of incorporating like wuxia into star wars before now mm-hmm. um like that high-flying fantastical martial arts fits star wars and jedi so so well based on you know the stuff we've seen jedi do before with all that flipping around and stuff um yeah the, you know this show delivered in fights the, the the fights that i was hoping for and that they promised but not so much in the the the, the sith focused stuff so oh. apparently they didn't plan a season two but the whole show ends very clearly hinting at a season two so hopefully they get one mm. despite I hope the, so too. the like horrible community that just the moment they see a black person or a woman or in this case a black non-binary person oh boy oh you t- boy a black non-binary pre- femme presenting person oh boy is up it is up 
and that is the main character it's up Amandala, and it's um, stuck yeah Amandla Stenberg who was also in Bodies 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 and she was Rue in the Hunger Games um, really wow yeah um, yeah she's like 26 or something it's like yeah time flies um, yeah but yeah I like I like the show for the most part like I said the plot was unfortunately kind of disappointing but there was a lot, bunch of interesting interesting stuff that I hope that they get a season two and they lean into all of the, the positive stuff the fights the idea of the Jedi being corrupt and actually mm-hmm. focusing on the Sith um, right in the last moments of the finale a violin solo plays that is undoubtedly done by the lead actor Amadala um, Stenberg since they um, I talked about mm-hmm. it before how they posted a whole video on the Star Wars YouTube channel about her being an, or them being an incredible violinist so I am pretty sure that oh. little violin section was directly from them. Fun, fun. So that's that's good for them, and, and they're a huge Star Wars fan. Like they 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 know their stuff. Uh, oh, we we get more of them. Uh, so moving on to video games. Um, mm-hmm. there was a trailer for Dead by Daylight crossing over with a uh, Tomb Raider. Um, uh, Laura Croft is being added as a survivor alongside a Tomb Raider themed map, and that's a that's an interesting crossover. I, I don't think it's it very interesting. Tomb Raider being like like horror. But, or, but the first game has its unnerving moments, I will say. Um, yeah. I have played it a long, long time ago. And it, 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 it has moments where it's like very, very unnerving, very unsettling. So I hope they play into that, that like idea of like being in an empty tomb by yourself, not knowing what's lurking behind the corner. Yeah. Behind a corner, you know, like being attacked by bears, perhaps even, which is a thing that happens. Yeah. And dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Sometimes it's both at the same time. Yeah. And there was also a trailer for an Overwatch and Transformers crossover where uh, you have a Optimus Prime skin for Reinhardt, a Bumblebee skin for Bastion, and a, a RC or an RC skin for Ilari, who I forgot this character existed. This is one of the newer characters. <laughs> and I watched a trailer for them a while back, and they're like related in like, like Aztec stuff and like the power of the sun. And it's really cool how it's, it's literally solar punk. Like it's oh. um the, the the word Overwatch is so interesting. It's it's uh, I'm, it sucks that it's they haven't made a show. Yeah, because they show like in this like I think it's in Mexico. This city that she lives in, it might be somewhere in South America. But um, in the city she lives in, they like use a lot of solar energy, and it's very solar punk. I was like, oh, this is cool, and like her whole Sick. thing is based around like solar energy. And yeah, she has an RC skin, and Ramacha has a Megatron skin, and yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, it looks sounds cool. So uh, multiverses. Um, yes, mm-hmm. is adding Beetlejuice and Samurai oh. Jack. Oh, Samurai Jack is up there on um, high on my list of like most wanted characters alongside Ben Ten. So mm-hmm. I, I think I'm definitely gonna have to get back into this game now that this is happening. Real, um, but uh, Evo is happening, so we got uh, a few uh, fighting game related news. There probably be more today that we are just not gonna be able to cover because we're recording. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, we got a trailer for SNK, an SNK versus Capcom collection called SNK versus Capcom SVC Chaos. And this mm-hmm. was anticipated by many due to the fact that Terry Bogard and my Sheridan, who are um, SNK characters, are being added as the first non Capcom guest characters in a Street Fighter game ever. Um, yeah. And yeah, this and like the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection could herald in like a new era of crossover fighters. Starting with I hope so with new addition in these franchises that you know Marvel's Capcom fighting collection has already sold a lot I'm waiting to hear a date which we'll probably hear at Evo before I pre-order mm-hmm. I mean, I'm gonna get it gonna get it physically for PS5. Um, unfortunately, it's not right. on Xbox Otherwise, I would get it for Xbox because I don't want to have to play for PlayStation Network, but um That might end up happening anyway because of a game that I'm gonna talk about later, but it, yeah, this is mm-hmm. cool This is cool. Um, I, I might also check this out because I've, I've heard a lot about this game for Capcom um, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so I played a demo for Dungeons of Hinterburg, which is a game that we talked about before. That uh, it reminded me of. Uh, actually, I, the game is out now. I'm pretty sure. Um, the full game is out and it's on Game Pass. But um, unfortunately, Please. it was all right. But it's not for me. But it, it is pretty cool. Real. Um, it reminded me of an idea I had for a Zelda game where Zelda is the lead character. So I was just that mm-hmm. like pulled me in. But the combat is way too slow for me. Um, uh, but yeah, Dungeons and Hinterberg is an action adventure RPG that includes monster fighting, puzzle solving, magic building, and relationship building, all set around the cozy alpine village of Hinterberg. You play as Luisa, a burnt out law trainee 
taking a break from her fast-paced corporate life to conquer the dungeons of Hinterburg. Um, it has a great art style, and it seems like a very, you know, cozy game. You know, try it out if you're interested. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Last but certainly not least for me in video games um, is Concord. So I played the Concord open beta, and it is good. Um, Ooh, so Concord exciting. is the, the PlayStation and PC exclusive hero shooter that uh, had its gameplay revealed at the last PlayStation State of Play alongside a cinematic that uh, clearly took inspiration from Guardians of the Galaxy. And a lot of people were kind of down on this game from its announcement years ago, and even more so after the gameplay and uh, cinematic reveal. But that's turning mm -hmm. around a little bit after the beta because it's honestly really fun. And it might be the first multiplayer game that I actually sink a lot of time into. Um, Ooh, exciting. Unfortunately, it costs $40 on top of... I didn't... I, I might need to look this up, but I'm, I mean, I tried to look it up, but I feel like all hints, based on what I read, leads towards the fact that you, you got to buy the game for 40 bucks, and you also have to pay for PS Plus to, on top of that to play multiplayer, which I hate that, the fact that you have to... Pay for multiplayer, though, to an extent, it makes sense. I think a lot of people think that, oh, that's stupid. Well, why do you have to pay for that? But, like, hosting servers mm -hmm. costs money. And, like, maintaining them, that costs money. So it makes sense that yeah. you have to pay to be able to use those resources. Because otherwise, you know, they, they would be losing money. Um, you know, it's not cheap to do. But I think the price should be lower to play games online. It shouldn't be as expensive as it is. I get that it also comes with a bunch of additional stuff. But people don't always use that additional stuff. So, like yeah um make a and you know they keep raising a price like lower that price and make a, a like the basic version even more bare bones so that i can you can just play games online that's it i don't need nothing extra sometimes that's all you need mm -hmm. um yeah this game is really fun um the uh there is going to be a beta for marvel rivals starting on the 23rd and i got in baby so i'm gonna be playing marvel rivals and I'm, we're going to be talking about that next episode. Um, I'm Ooh, excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to try to main magic. I'm going to try to play as magic, Black Panther, and uh, uh, what's his name? Adam Warlock. Those are the ones I want to play the most. But real, I'm going to try, try out all the characters. Um, yeah, Concord, um, like I said, it's a hero shooter, but um, I've never played Destiny, but a lot of people compare it to the the PvP in Destiny um, and the way that plays. Mm -hmm. That combined a little bit with Overwatch because it is a hero shooter. Um but oh. unlike unlike games like Overwatch, you don't really like need certain like types of characters on your team at all times. Like you don't need a tank, you don't need a healer all the time. But also similar to right. Marvel Rivals, they don't they make it to where like the healers can also be very aggressive, and you don't really if you play a healer, you should be healing. But you can like play it like any other character almost. Um, so it's much more fun to play as a healer. Um, and I played with my brother yesterday. He was playing a healer character that he really liked. That was cool. Um, I'll lean towards this, like, this character that, uh, is the, oh my god, I need you to look up Concord characters right now. The character designs okay. are so good, and there's this one character, hold on, let me see you a picture of them, because they, they, it's the coolest robot design I've ever seen. Oh, is it one, one off? Hmm? Or is it, it's, because I'm looking at a, an article, um, these designs are sick. And they're also very diverse, which I'm really enjoying. Yeah, there's a robot, the pink robot that looks so cool. I can't remember their name right now. Pink. It's like okay. Kears or something like that. Ah, but uh, yeah, it's. Oh, let me look up like Concord characters because. All I was of just the, saying, yeah. There's this one character that looks like uh, kind of like Blade. Oh, I found it. Um. Oh, I found also the one you were talking about. <laughs> they look so cool. They were in the suit. The robot design is such a good design. And I'm excited to see what like the costumes look like. They're going for a 70s mm -hmm. aesthetic. Yeah, and there's a black character um, named Baz who like throws knives. That kind of looks like almost like a like a vampire. <laughs> and Ooh. they're really fun to play on like one of the smaller maps. And like yeah, it's it's, it's a fun game. Um, I'm excited to play more of it. Looks um, like it. I'll try to play some of it tonight before the beta's up because I think today's the last day for the beta. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. If you don't have anything. Um, I did want to talk briefly about uh, Emil the Smiling Man. Yeah, so um, I had that. Detective. Yeah, I had that on here, but then I took it off because I realized I didn't care anymore once I found out what it was. But <laughs> real, I care. Um, because the I mystery was a little right, but then it's like, yeah, I have never heard of Famicom De Detective Club. I've never heard of the series before ever in my life. But in watching the trailer, it it had it got me interested. Yeah, I like. I like visual novels. I like visual novels that have like yes, more I gameplay do. to it than just reading. And you like horror. And these, novels. 
I love horror visual novels. These games look really interesting, and I'm thinking. Yeah, they remade the it being first two. A few the years first two. Ago. Yep, I'm thinking about picking them up, them up and trying them out. And then if I like them, I might play Emio and come back with more thoughts on it. But it looks interesting. And I'm glad that like this mystique and this mystery introduced me to a game series yeah. I probably A would have never heard about like heard about and B never would have gotten into because of it. You know? Yeah, because more, more companies should do trailers like this. Yeah, everybody was like, What is this? They're making Nintendo's making a horror game. That's weird. They don't really make a lot of those. And I'm pretty sure some right. people probably brought that up. The um Famicom Detective Club, like maybe it's this, but nobody was sure. But yeah, it's once I found right. out what it was, I was like, yeah, that doesn't interest me as much. But so I'm gonna take it off just to save some time. But it does yeah. look, it does look interesting. It does, it does. I'll probably we'll we'll see if I do get into them. I'll I'll come back with more notes. <laughs> cool. More thoughts. Well, yep. uh, that's all we have. Um, yeah. You can find our ads above us. Um, you know, you find. My ad above me, my ad is ad above them. And, you know, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more storytelling content. And to click the notification bell so that you're notified when we post. Peace. See ya.